How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? It is me, Alf here, and today we got a video on my helmet collection. I'm just going to go over really quickly. Instead of doing videos on each individual helmet, I thought I'd just do one big, long video on all the helmets that I own. And to make it not too, too long, we'll just give a brief overview. Overview. I saw this on a website, and I'm like, I'm going to go ahead and pick it up because it looks pretty cool. And this was a Czechoslovakian VZ-53 which is a copy of the, well, a rough copy, well, no, uh, pretty much an exact, well, the shell at least, is an exact copy of the SSH-40 used by the Soviet Union. But the actual liner is quite different. But this was the first helmet that I ever bought. And while I didn't get into helmet collecting even after I bought this, because, well, I basically just sat on a styrofoam head for, like, a year or two, and then I decided to get another helmet, or actually another few helmets, and yeah, that's what started that whole obsession. But there's the liner. This thing is in fairly good condition, though the leather could could be in better shape, but it's definitely not the worst one I've seen, and it is in really good condition. And again, this one's really special because it's the first helmet that I bought. Alright, next we got the Hungarian M70. I picked this up from a local surplus store in really good condition. This is also a copy of the Soviet SSH-40. Um, again, the liner is different. This one has a very interesting reflective, um, apparently IR resistant or IR reflective paint, which is why it is so like reflective. I mean, you can you can see the lights that I use here in the in the helmet, and if I had my arm in the right position you can see me waving but uh, the lights not reflecting in the right direction but yeah so this is a very cool helmet these were a development of the previous hungarian m uh m51s i believe no that's incorrect i don't remember the one the predecessor to this but the liner is much better than the ssh40 it has a four point chin strap and four oil pads so the hungarian m70 really cool helmet very common on the surplus market fairly cheap too next we got my american m1 helmet um this is a post war example post world war ii example though this was very similar to what we used in world war ii um excluding the liner and the chin strap was different but the actual shell itself was almost identical. So the American M1 is very famous. Uh, again, this is a Cold War era one. The liner is different. And this was listed on the site as an Israeli M1, but I don't think it is an Israeli M1. I think it's just a standard American one. In fact, it looks like it might have been repainted. But I can't verify that. Next, we have the... Yugoslavian M59, uh, specifically the M5985. This is another very common helmet on the surplus market. You'll see them, interestingly, with a variety of different crests. You can get them with a painted-on red star or the sticker emblems. Uh, there's a few variants of the sticker emblems. Mine is the double eagle crest with the two swords. These are Yugoslavian or Serbian helmets, and they're quite interesting they're very stahlhelm like you can you can see the stahlhelm like appearance from the side and the liner is fairly comfortable on these fairly simple too not much to it but they are very cool helmets they're actually fairly lightweight compared to the others and yeah this one's actually pretty small so very common in the surplus market, again, like the M70, very cheap too. And yeah, moving on. Next, we have the East German M56, 76, or 75, I don't remember which one. Um, this was the last version of, or the last upgrade to the M56 before the East German um, and West German unification. The liner is different from the original. Um, this is a very cool helmet because, like the previous M59, 
helmet that I showed you, the Yugoslavian one, this also is heavily based on the Stahlhelm. In fact, you can see this even better, the resemblance. The steep downward slope backwards. Um, these also have quite a steep um, taper, I guess you could call it, upwards. Um, which I assume would give better ballistic protection. Though these weren't designed as ballistic helmets, these were designed to protect against like shrapnel. But yeah, pretty cool helmet. The actual liner on this is also a very good liner. It has two like almost mattress foam like pads and a four point chin strap like the M70. So a very good helmet. Um, probably one of the best designs. Okay, next we have the famous Soviet SSH-40. This, the some of the previous helmets I mentioned were copies of it. This is the World War II Soviet helmet, basically. So this is what they went into World War II with, or not really went into World War II with. Uh, this was developed. Um, no, no. I completely forgot my World War II history. I'm sorry about that. Yes, they had these during World War II. We'll put it that way. Um, but this one is not a World War II example. This is a post-war example, so during the Cold War. And, yeah, very famous helmet design. You'll see this design pop up two more times. Um, so, let's go ahead and show the liner. The liner on this one I'm not a big fan of. It's pretty simplistic. It's literally just three oil pads together. Let's get this into better lighting. See if I can move my lamp so you can get a better shot of the inside. Uh, there's three oil pads and a two-point chin strap. Um, not the best liner, but it's also not the worst either. But not definitely not my favorite. Definitely one of the worst liners that I have out of all the helmets that I have in my collection at least. But still a really cool piece of history and very interesting helmet. Alright, so this helmet is very large and doesn't really fit on the head that well, but... Anyways, this is the Soviet SSH-68. This is what replaced the Soviet SSH-40 and SSH-60. And the SSH-60 was an intermediate design between the SSH-40 and SSH-68. It was basically an SSH-40 with a better um, liner system. It had four oil pads instead of um, two and had a leather chin strap, I believe, compared to the canvas one. I don't have an SSH-60, uh, it's on my list of things to buy, but I don't have one yet. But the SSH-68 is what the Soviets went into the Soviet-Afghan war with, and it remains in service to this day, though it's mostly been replaced by Kevlar helmets. This is a very large helmet, as you can see, and the liner system is still pretty lacking, in my opinion. So, four um, oil pads and, a, again, a two-point leather chin strap. I do like, they actually put the rough side of the leather facing outwards and the, so, the more smooth side facing inwards, so the rough side isn't on your chin, which doesn't really bother me, but it is a kind of comfort thing, I guess. And, yeah, this is really cool. This, is in, this one is in absolutely beautiful condition. Next, we have the Polish WZ-6775. WZ this is in the gray. There's also a green version. Don't know why these were gray, and I don't know the difference between or what they were issued to and why they were painted gray instead of green, but it is gray. And this is, again, an SSH-40 copy. You can clearly see that if I show you from the front and sides, you can see this is an SSH-40 SSH copy. But the liner is one of the best, in my opinion. This liner is really good. It has a two-point chin strap like the SSH-40, but the actual liner itself is far improved. It's actually adjustable. I don't think the SSH-40's liner is adjustable. And, yeah, um... Again, pretty cool that it's in gray. I don't really know why it is, but there's the Polish WZ-6775. And finally, we got the French F1. I don't actually remember which way this goes, whether this is forward or backwards. Um, the chin strap is kind of screwed up. I know it's kind of funny looking. I actually do have the cover for this as well. 
I'm not going to put it on completely, but um, yeah, I picked this up at a local surplus store, and it was pretty cool. This is the French F1. Um, the French had quite a few F1s. The F1 for Moss, the F, the World War One era grenade, and, and this, and there might be a few others too. But anyways, pretty cool helmet. This is um, actually quite like tall, and there's a few dents on the top on my example but other than that it's in really good condition there is the liner very good liner in it very comfortable helmet to wear and overall pretty cool helmet Finally, we got this SSH-40 copy reproduction, maybe, don't really know what this is, actually. It was listed as a Bulgarian M51, but it was super cheap, it was like $15, and I don't really know what this helmet is. It's definitely an SSH-40 copy, there's a high chance this might be a reproduction, though I'm not sure. It's in really good condition, but it's not that uncommon to find helmets in this condition. And I have a few that are in this in this sort of condition. But um, the liner looks like the WZ or the VZ 53's liner, and it's kind of weird. Um, I actually don't know if this is original or not or reproduction and if it is original I don't know what this actually is so if anybody has any ideas leave them down below I think the rivets might be a giveaway we got two up front and then one at the back so I'm actually not sure what this is um, three rivets um, I guess I could I guess I should go look online but I couldn't find anything that looked similar to it um, and yeah so, anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, leave a dislike if you didn't, and we will see you guys next time. Peace.